Hey, this is Joel again with Jefferson Electric. We're gonna be installing two single pole switches here. One switch is for the garbage disposal. Once the countertop is installed, this will be a kitchen sink. And the other single pole switch is for the light over the sink. Single pole refers to the internal mechanism of the switch and the fact that it's a single location switch. I'm gonna pull my wires out of the wall and identify their purpose. This is my hot feed into the box. You can see it's marked with a flag and it's capped with wire nuts in case that breaker should be turned on. All of the rest of these sets of wires are labeled. I have a disposal here. And then one thing that we always run into is this one label I can't read. And I tried scratching out the paint with my fingernail and in fact primer, I can't do it, it won't come off. So I've got a disposal, I've got a dishwasher, which is gonna require a hot feed, and then I've got my other switch leg. There's only one um, purpose left for this wire, so I know what purpose it's performing. This is getting a little bit more involved here. I'm gonna take all of my grounds, I'm gonna start with my grounds, one step at a time, and I'm gonna route them all together to a fairly central location in the box. I'll lay them together and I'm gonna give them a pre-twist because I really want a good, good grouping. And I'm mindful of the primer that's on these conductors and I'm twisting them at a, at a point that's pretty clean. And as any of that that's left flakes off, any of that primer that's left, I'm taking it off with my fingernail. Now I've got a good pre-twist there. I'm gonna take a large crimp sleeve that can comfortably hold, there, there are at least two or three sizes of these crimp sleeves, a larger crimp sleeve, whatever is a comfortable fit over four number 12 ground wires. I'm gonna take my same pair of crimping pliers. I'm gonna take my most dramatic crimp. I'm gonna give it two really firm pinches down. Again, my most dramatic crimp, that second one closer to the cutting surface. In this case, I've got two switches, that's two devices. That is two grounds needed. I'm going to use my longer ground wires and I'm going to cut off my two shorter ground wires. I don't need those. Then at this point, all of my whites in this box are neutrals. That's not always the case with switching. You have to know what's going on. You have to understand the wiring. But all of my whites in this particular box are neutrals. So I'm gonna take my second step by combining thoughtfully. Now you can do it in a really messy way, but I've worked the neutral conductors around the other conductors such that they're all pretty cleanly grouped. And you can see here, I've got like four different lengths. I want them all to pair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them. I don't want to take too much off. I like the overall length, but I'm going to cut them to the same length. I'm going to take my strippers for number 12 solid. I'm going to take off a little less than an inch of insulation. And something to note, you, it's unlikely in a residence, but in a lot of other circumstances, it's quite possible that you'd be working with stranded conductors. In that case, you want to upsize your strip hole by one. For instance, when I'm using number 12 solid, I'm using the number 12 strip hole, but if I'm using number 12 stranded, I'm gonna be using my number 10, next size up, strip hole, based on wire gauge. Going to take, we'll cover wire gauge in a later video. I'm gonna take the first two conductors, utilizing my lineman's pliers, I'm gonna give them just a subtle pre-twist, maybe one full twist. I'm gonna take my next conductor, I'm gonna pull it to the same length because I want all the ends to match up. And I'm gonna give it a second twist. I'm gonna take my fourth conductor and I'm gonna match up the ends and I'm gonna give it the final. I want it to be tight. I want them to be tight. So I'm kind of pinching and twisting so that they're all laying tightly together. I've got one that's a little longer, so I'm just gonna 
cut off that nub. So I've got a good lay there. In this case, because I have four number 12s, I'm using a red ideal wire nut. I'm twisting to the right, always to the right. The pre-twist is always to the right because your wire nut installs to the right. That's the tightening method. I've given up 10 to 12 revolutions there and that's a good snug fit. That's a quality electrical connection that will be here as long as the house. I'm done with my neutrals. So I'm going to tuck them to the back of the box. Out of my way, I'm being mindful that my neutral doesn't get nicked on a sharp edge of my crimp sleeve. If it does, I can use one of my screwdrivers. If it, if it is ex being exerted pressure on, I'll use one of my screwdrivers and just gently get it backed away from that sharp edge. Any sharp edge, there's movement in a house. There's movement in a house. If there's a loose joint, it may last a year, it may last 10 years, but it will come loose. If there's a wire rubbing on a sharp edge, it may last two or three decades, but it will fail. Right now we're in a 1920s home. We want it, this wiring has just been completely rewired. We want it to last another 100 years, so best practices. All right, now I need to deal with um, all of the rest of my conductors. And what I'm gonna choose to do is to clean up my grounds Again, I'm using the 12 gauge strip hole and I'm running it along the end of that ground to remove the primer. I'm doing the same with both. It's almost always overspray in an electrical box. And then I'm taking, I'm gonna install my switch to the ground so that as I determine what my conductors are, my hot, my black conductors, I can secure them in place. Again, I'm still being mindful of my cabinet face, not putting much pressure at all on it. I've secured my grounding conductors. I've oriented my switches in the vertical position. Down is off, up is on, the switch is labeled. And now I'm terminating my conductors, my hot conductors. And so I've got switch leg number one. In this case, there's not a right or a wrong about where which switch I put the sink light on and which switch I put the disposal on. But I'm personally gonna choose to make my sink light um, my second switch in this case, it's gonna lay a little neater in the box and um, that's a small, very small advantage. If the homeowner or designer is present, that's a good question for them. It's strictly a preference decision in this case. And again, I'm gonna terminate my ungrounded conductor, my hot conductor, to either of the two screws. I've got, um, Taking off that non-label that's been primed over. I'm gonna terminate my other switch leg. I'm gonna wrap clockwise. I don't want any wire insulation underneath my screw, being mindful of that. And now this is where I've got two wires and two terminals. You might think it's cut and dry, real clean, but in fact, I need both of these to be energized as hots. And I need both terminals to be energized as hots. And right now, all I have is one hot conductor. When that breaker goes live, this is the only thing that will be energized. So I'm gonna use the pigtailing method. I've got some number 12 wire here, and I'm gonna pull off quite a bit, about 12 inches, maybe a little bit more. And I'm gonna intentionally strip back about two inches of that conductor then I'm gonna to come to a midpoint and strip back about one inch. So I've got two strip points. I'm gonna to come to the other end. I'm gonna take that seven eighths or so off as well. Now, because I've got so much conductor, a relatively full box, two switches, I'm gonna cut these back just a bit. Again, I always wanna be generous with the next person who's gotta come along here and do something different with this and, and service this installation. 
and I've got code minimum requirements to meet as well. I'm going to give the first two a pre-twist. I'm going to give the second two the twist. I really want to be snug enough that these wires will hold themselves together. Red wire nut from my part supply pouch here. 10 to 12 turns in a clockwise direction. And now my hot coming in has energized the feed to my dishwasher. Before I go any further, I want to stop and I want to cap off the dishwasher wire so I don't leave a hot wire down underneath the sink. I'm going to take the mid strip position here and I'm going to twist it around the first switch. And now I want this to be long enough that I can reach my second switch comfortably and get the switch, the final switch spacing of my choice. I'm going to work it underneath the ground wire. I don't want there to be pressure between my ground and my hot conductor. Still using my number one square drive. Quite snug, never death grip. All right, now I want to carefully fold all of those wires, this big jumble, back into the box securely such that it's permanently seated, no sharp edges are rubbing, and the grounding conductor is not touching any of my hot terminals on the sides of my switches. All right, now in this multi-switch installation, I want to have the switches aligned such that the plate fits comfortably over both switches and nothing looks cocked left or right. If there are, if I were to enumerate the most commonly made mistakes, I would say one, poor wiring connections. Not making sure that every connection inside every box is properly snugged and lasting. And remember, it has to be tight enough not just when it's made, but then also when it's been forced back inside the box. And then it's gonna have some mild heat stress over time. As current flows over those conductors, there is heat, there's mild expansion and contraction. It's gotta withstand that for decades. Also, damage to the finished surface. Um, it's, it's real, real easy to get smudges and fingerprints on the finished surface and then fit and finish. It is all too common for people attempting this work for the first time to not get a clean fit and finish. I, I wanna see it's necessary to me that the plate fits snugly around the entire perimeter, that the switches are not heavily cocked in or out because of the pressure that's being applied by the number 12 wire on the back of the box, and that you always wanna test your final work. Sometimes. The work's done well, but there's a difference between who roughed the wiring and who finished the device. Didn't have the same mind, and this switch will inadvertently control something um, down the countertop or in another room. So you always want to be mindful to check the finished work.